finish up, then I'll bring these treats to you. Rack of ribs or a sausage pizza too. Then I'm out, more deliveries I gotta do. No scenarios, cause this is not a porn shoot. Delivering all these clothes on a peak. Just so I can bring you what you can eat. When you see me zooming down to your street, you know I'm delivering something savory or sweet. Order up all the food you enjoy. With long subs or a double hot joy. Bringing it to you if you're in Illinois. It's my job. I'm a delivery boy. Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and this week I'm reacting to three new songs from various artists. First up is Dan Bull's British Teeth, followed by a new song by Tom Carty, which I've already forgotten the name of, and then uh, Making Friends at 40 by Thomas Benjamin Wilde Esquire. Um... If you enjoy my breakdowns of these types of songs, please be sure to check out my own music, a clip of which you saw at the beginning there. I am also a comedy musician, so I do my own comedy music as well as react to comedy music. Check out my new stuff, please. Uh, and if you like these kind of reactions uh, and want to see more of them, please like, share, comment, and especially subscribe. As of the recording of this, I am a little over 50, like 51, uh, subs away from 10,000 subscribers, and I'd really like to reach there. Um, if I do reach 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a 10,000 subscriber special where I do a live stream of me playing Bendy and the Ink Machine and then reacting to Stupendium's Bendy and the Ink Machine songs. So if you'd like to see that and you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, the little algorithm shows me that a lot of the people who watch these videos aren't subscribed, so that would really help me out. And uh, if you really, 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 really want to help out the channel, it's a lot of reallys, uh, you can check me out at Patreon.com, where you get to see these videos early, get my music early, vote in polls, all sorts of other cool stuff like that there. That really helps out the channel. Liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and especially the Patreon. But... All of that out of the way now. <sighs> Let's dive into these songs. This Dan Bull song uh, is coming out. Uh, well, it came out this week, uh, and I'm reacting to it the day it came out. Videos being pre recorded, that's how time works. Um, Patreon people got to see this probably the day it aired, but also, you know, everybody else is seeing it on Friday. I'm over explaining things. This is a fun job. All right, anyway, I'm slowly losing my mind. Let's just watch Dan wrap his face off about his teeth. I'm flossing. <laughs> no, that was, that was brushing, that flossing, but, but sure. You may feel a small amount of discomfort as I sink my teeth into this issue. <laughs> Fucking let's go. I was a jolly good child, yes. but never had a Hollywood smile. Oh. I probably should be bothered, but I'm not, because my gob is just part of my ebullient style. My gob, which is you know, British slang for face. Uh, uh, already enjoying this. There was a, a, a dental advisory on the thumbnail for this. Not a parental advisory. Dental advisory for British teeth. Uh, that is already fantastic, and uh, definitely digging this already. It's, this seems to be among Dan's more humorous songs. He does a lot of different styles and doesn't always run toward the humor there, but uh, I always appreciate when he does, and uh, definitely always try to check those out. Let's roll it back a little here. Oh yeah, if you're new here, I pause and actually react to the song, and since a lot of these are, are hip-hop songs, or, you know, it's just comedy and you want to make sure you don't miss any jokes, I pause it so that I can react so I'm not talking over the song. It's a thing. Anyway, Fucking let's go. I was a jolly good child, yes. but never had a Hollywood smile. Oh. I probably should be bothered, but I'm not, because my gob is just part of my ebullient style. Oh. Charmingly funny and vile, like Stan, Cartman, Kenny, and Kyle. <laughs> but a woman who was good for a while, oh. then I grinned and I'd have run in a mile. I mean, they, they, they point out the, uh, the trope of British teeth not being very straight in uh, the Austin Powers movies. You know, because he's Austin as a spy, and he's thought of as sexy, and yet his smile is a bit crooked. Um, I myself don't have uh, British teeth because I'm not British, but I do have crooked teeth. 
my, my bottom teeth are very small, and this, this one right over here is very crooked. It's a thing. That's going to make a great thumbnail. Let's see if I remember to put it in, kids. All right. Look at all that spit. I got a mouth like a saw like pit. I look a bit like I was kicked to the curb, and my teeth took it worse than the time like a bit. <laughs> There's a great shot of it. See, he doesn't he doesn't have bad teeth. The uh, the canines are a bit more pronounced, but uh, you know they're they're a bit going in different directions. Uh, not nearly as bad as as some crooked things happening in my face. Uh, you, you're being a little too harsh on yourself there, Dan. Calling your mouth a sarlacc pit. I will admit, I do have the same problem where I drool a lot when I brush my teeth. This is becoming way too personal. Yeah. Met a woman, it was good for a while. Then I grinned and I'd run in a mile. Look at all that spit. I got a mouth like a sarlacc pit. I look a bit like I was kicked to the curb and my teeth took it worse than the time like a bit. I'm a little bit Ricky Gervais. If he was hit with a brick in the face. Dirty cunt, perverted version of Kirsten Dunst. But oh. Damn, that's a good line. Uh, the C word in uh, Britain used a bit more uh, loosely than here. It doesn't quite n mean nearly as a, as a uh, pejorative or expletive there as it is here. Uh, it's not quite as demeaning, I, I suppose, uh, overseas. Uh, but uh, a perverted version of Kirsten Dunst. Ooh. That is a sick burn. Because uh, <laughs> Kirsten Dunn says notoriously have, has a snaggle tooth. Um, there was an article that came out just today where she said the producers of Spider-Man took her to the dentist to get that fixed and she refused. I mean, it's kind of insulting that they did that, but they also did hire her to do the job and, you know, her. it's kind of a trademark for her now. Uh, whatever, you know, it, eh, it's a thing, it's, mwah. I look a bit like I was kicked to the curb and my teeth took it worse than the time like a bit. I'm a little bit Ricky Gervais, if he was hit with a brick in the face. Dirty cunt, perverted version of Kirsten Dunst, but worse in person because of a certain only any pungent lineup girls, who's first in front? <laughs> oh man, that little inner pocket of, of rhymes, really, really good. Dan's got... Uh, great flow with his inner workings, uh, all the internal rhyme schemes that he does. Very, very good. Actually, somebody's been kind of diagramming his rhyme schemes on Twitter recently, and Dan's been retweeting those. If you haven't seen those, they're highly impressive. Uh, go check those out. Got a tongue like a Persian rug, mouthwash past the detergent plug. This is urgent <laughs> dog, get a surgeon booked to do work with the curtain shut. Too squeamish to floss, bleeding is cross, so please just leave me to rock. Bleeding is gross. Just we change the pronunciation to make it fit the rhyme against floss. It's an interesting tactic. Let's see if it works out for him, Cotton. Uh, <laughs> I dig it, honestly. I, I, it's one of the things that a lot of people kind of like shy away in more traditional songs is, is fudging the pronunciation to make it work with your rhyme scheme so that you can kind of complete your thought. Uh, as far as, like, whatever kind of thing you're trying to say in the song, but I think it's a little bit more accepted in comedy music because the point of the song is to be humorous as it is. So if you're fudging the pronunciation, it's going to be perceived as humorous anyway because of how you're trying to, like, shove that rhyme in and make it work. Um, Hip-hop, it's a little tricky to do that with because, you know, you have purists out there, of course, who want words to sound right. But uh, fudging with pronunciation uh, always gets a laugh out of me, anyway. It's a personal preference, sure, but uh, it, it's something that works for me, so I, I dug that. Got a tongue like a Persian rug, fuck mouthwash past the detergent plug. This is urgent, look, get a surgeon book to do work with the curtain shut. Too squeamish to floss, bleeding is cross, so please just leave me to rock. Cause believe it or not, I really am reasonably pleased with the teeth that I've got. Don't give a fuck with the yard, I've had a mind, stop! Arm and hammer talk. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. Stop Arm and Hammer time. Because Arm and Hammer, who, who make, like, you know, baking soda and stuff for cleaning products, also make a toothpaste. And also Stop Hammer time, being a flip from, from MC Hammer's Can't Touch This. Uh, bravo. Bravo. That's, that's some good stuff right there.
Us is bleeding his cross, so please just leave me to rot. Cause believe it or not, I really am reasonably pleased with the teeth that I've got. Don't give a fuck where they are, I've had a mind. Stop! Arm and hammer time. You're jelly of my British teeth. I'm a vicious beast. If you do not like my music, then it's obvious that you are just too jelly of my British teeth. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast with British teeth. That's the... That's the most unique hook I've heard in one of Dan's songs recently. That's... That's pretty great. Music, then it's obvious that you are just too jelly of my British teeth. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast with British teeth. I shot him white and the mic and him straighten. Maybe. But I kind of like to frighten the states with him. <laughs> I kind of like to frighten the states with him. Bravo. <laughs> That's good stuff. Actually, these are uh, some some good tweets here. Good job not taking care of your health. You're just jelly of my British teeth. Actually, British. He spells it British without the T but with an apostrophe. And you simple have no self-respect, no way in hell I would... Something like yours, haha, chosen really how lazy unsaid. Imagine sending that to a stranger on Twitter. Go see a dentist and shut up, lol, quit getting in your feelings. Very much sound like you're jelly of my British teeth. Like he's, he's using his hook as a reply in these. A lot of good... Th look in your heart and really think about it, though. Do you really think the real issue is that I can't come up with anything good to say or is that you're a bit jelly of my British teeth? And these are all from <laughs> October 31st and October 30th of last month. Uh, bravo, Dan, for uh, setting up a lot of that. That's pretty great. Ooh. And with Amy Winehouse, it sounded the same without the wide mouth no! and the same apply... Rhyming Winehouse with wide mouth. Ah, oh, man, his rhyme schemes are so, so good. Based on a vicious place with British teeth. Fish got him white and the mic and him straightened. Maybe. But they kind of like to fight in the States with a boo. And with Amy Winehouse, it sounded the same without the wide mouth. No! And the same applies to Shane McGowan, yeah. John Lydon, yeah. Clint Howard. Think okay, Shane McGowan, I'm sorry. Shane McGowan's teeth are messed up. He's an amazing musician, but, uh, yeah, dude, dude looks like he just got, got rocked with several bricks. Uh, doesn't make him a bad person, doesn't, you know, bad performer or anything, just, all the examples you gave are people with bad teeth who haven't gotten them fixed. Shane needs to get them fixed. That's, I don't know how you chew with what poor Shane has, so... You know, just, just saying. Of all the examples, that's the one where I'm like, you know, Shane McGowan, he really should get it fixed. White and the mic and him straighten. Maybe but they kind of like to fight in the states with a boo. And with Amy Winehouse, it sounded the same without the wide mouth. No! And the same applies to Shane McGowan, yeah. John Lydon, yeah. Clint Howard. Think Lemmy meets Steve Buscemi. I can already see a semi. See <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy from from uh. God, why can't I think of Ace of Spades? Motorhead. Right? Motorhead? Yeah. Uh, cross with Steve Buscemi. I can already see your semi. Uh, noticing the flick of the lyrics going upward. Meaning you're uh, you're getting a chub about the idea of the two of them being yik bind. Yeah, that's... That doesn't really exactly butter my brisket. Uh, butter my brisket? Butter my biscuit. I know what I was trying to say with puns. All right. And with Amy Winehouse, it sounded the same without the wide mouth. No! And the same applies to Shane McGowan, yeah. John Lydon, yeah. Clint Howard. Think Lemmy meets Steve Buscemi. I can already see you semi. See your jelly of my British teeth are plenty. See your envy. I'm the MVP of dentistry. I'm the NHS. My teeth are sexy. There's so many internal schemes there, man. So good. Up in the act with precious raps. Winning like a Cheshire cat. Fuck your... I'm sorry, the Aquafreshest Raps? That's a great uh, pun there. That's really good. Ellie of my British teeth are plenty. See your envy. I'm the MVP of dentistry. I'm the NHS. My teeth are sexy. Up in the Aquafreshest Raps. Winning like a Cheshire cat. Fuck your feckless standard of beauty. You can shut your precious mouth. My dentist was a dentist. She never did a thing that was senseless. She sensibly selected medical consensus over aesthetic pretenses. God, those schemes. Regarding hygiene, my teeth are quite clean, but far from the whitest I've seen. They used to be white, now they're yellowing, maturing like cheddar and mellowing. Maturing like cheddar. Oh my god. That's 
horrible, but a great uh, a great line. I'll, the raining teeth in this shot. That's so good. Developing into better things. They're getting ever more menacing. Snapping like a terrapin. When I'm dead, I'll be outlived by my skeleton. You're just jelly of my British teeth. I'm a vicious beast. If you do not like my music, then it's obvious that you are just too jelly of my British teeth. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast. I'm a vicious beast with British teeth. I love the dancing teeth in the background, too. That's a nice touch. Smile! <laughs> Wow. How long does he stand there brushing his teeth to get that much uh, suds? <laughs> the, the nightcap is such a nice touch. That's uh, bravo. Bravo, Dan. That is an excellent song. That is uh, just some frightening visu uh, visuals there. But, uh, yeah, that's a great song. It's a great video. Bravo. Really good stuff. And he's just going to keep standing there. All right. Dripping. Oh, okay. Foamy. That's... You're just a rabid dog now. All right, cool. Next up is uh, another new song from Tom Carty, one of my favorite new artists in comedy music. Australian uh, TikToker Tom Carty does these short little snippets of songs, usually about a minute or two long. Sometimes they're 30 seconds. He did one actually just released yesterday that I was like, I'm not going to react to a 30 second song. Uh, you know, I just watched it. It was great, of course. It was a very reminiscent, uh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's uh, very reminiscent of uh, Brian Regan's U2 joke, but he put it in song for 30 seconds and it's great. This one's called About Eight Hours. I don't know what this one's about. I haven't seen this one yet. Obviously, that's why I'm reacting to it here, because that's the point of the show. I've over-explained things again. Anyway, here we go. Work hard through the week, making money and losing sleep. Friday night means it's time to bend to get fucked up with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love comedians who self-shoot everything, so they have to play all the parts. And, <laughs> you know, playing your own friends... Ian Lockwood does that in his videos where he's playing multiple people in his videos and it's just him with different wigs on. This one was just him in different outfits, not not changing his appearance, anything. Just the different clothes. No wigs or, or masks or anything like that. It's just all clearly Tom Cardi. That's so good. Uh, it's, like, it's like Ryan George's videos where he's talking to somebody who looks like himself because it is himself and he's doing the back and forth and it's... His, when he ever gets self-referential about that, it's brilliant stuff. I love it. Work hard through the week, making money and losing sleep. Friday night means it's time to bend to getting fucked up with my friends. Everybody's got their voice in their head. It's body time. You can sleep when you're dead. Sometimes I hear another voice. <laughs> This one scares me. Shut your mouth, lay down, and don't move for about eight hours. <laughs> ah, yes, the voice that tells you how to sleep. Shut your mouth, lay down, and don't move for about eight hours. It's weird. You know, that's that's kind of something I, I've thought about for years. Like, everybody on the planet, practically, you know, not just people, but animals, too, some more than others, my, one of my cats is over there completely asleep, uh, will just, there's a, a point where you just kind of have to go unconscious for a while. Have you, can you imagine trying to explain that to either other people who've never heard of sleep or to, like, aliens if they came to the planet? Oh, yeah, no, no, every night. Uh, we've decided nighttime is when most people will decide to, to lay down in a comfy rectangle and uh, and and just be unconscious for about eight hours. Some people only get about maybe five to six hours of unconsciousness. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just what the body needs is to not be awake. Just to be knocked out for a while. To recharge its battery. It's weird, man. Sleep is a weird thing. But I love it. I love sleep. It's important. This got... It is getting personal again. <laughs> I'm sorry, we followed all of that with zip your fuckhole. 
Oh, that's that's good times. This one scares me. Shut your mouth, lay down, and don't move for about eight hours. Zip your fuck hole and close your eyes. Motherfucker, gonna get some sleep tonight. <laughs> I like how this voice also has bags under its eyes. <laughs> it's the little details, even for TikTok. <laughs> you have a blessing, shut it down, you do exactly what I say. I like... <laughs> Let's superimpose a dog named Saturday and a gun <laughs> slowly keyframed up. <laughs> that he's clearly not holding, he's going like this behind it. Oh man, that's funny. Just ask. No! <laughs> Come on, we have to go. No, this guy fucking scares me. I can't hear you. I said, Shut your mouth, lay down, and tell me. Okay, I'll go to him. Hi, yeah, sorry. I was. Go to sleep, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the, the sleep voice is aggressive. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> this is unfair. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> He's just menacing me in the back. Oh my god, that is so funny. And it just abruptly stops because it's a TikTok. And oh man. Tom Cardi, you baffling genius. Alright, alright. And finally. Thomas Benjamin Wilde Esquire with Making Friends at 40, which it says it's an original song, but the title makes me think it's a parody of Taking Care of Business. Making friends at 40 every day. Well, probably not, because it's tough. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't know who Thomas Benjamin Wilde Esquire is, he is uh, uh, a, a mandolinist or a ukuleleist. Is that a... I don't know if that's the, the term or not, but he, he grew to popularity a couple of years ago with having a song called No More Fucks to Give. Um, he had a, an album version that was out for a while uh, that uh, kind of grew in popularity once a video of him performing it live uh, surfaced onto the interwebs. And uh, the live version of the song became the number two song for 2019 and the number one song for 2020 on the Dr. Demento show. Uh, I think those are the years. I think those years are right. Um, but yeah, Thomas uh, Benjamin Wilde Esquire playing the... Playling? Playing the... I speak goodly, I swear. Uh, playing the ukulele in many of his songs. And uh, again, another, another uh, comedy musician from overseas. Did not intend to uh, focus on the non-American comedy music in this episode, but that's how it shook out, so here we are, kids. Anyway, let's check out Making Friends at 40. Another song, I might add. Uh, as someone who is over 40, this may also be getting a little personal, so here we go. I always love how jolly he looks in his more recent videos, too. Because he's just dude with a beard grinning and playing the uke. Play I keep saying playling. It's a new tongue. I just had it replaced. Uh, playing the ukulele. Uh, just, just, just jolly. Ooh, good trumpets. Is this what we've come to? Now that we're reaching middle age and we've left all youthful exuberance behind. I kind of wish uh, lyrics were up. Let's see if I can do closed captioning. Well, it's all youthful exuberance behind. Yes, I can do closed captioning. I learned a thing! Alright, anyway. Uh, yes. A tolerable lifestyle and a reasonable wage With fewer fun distractions left to find Has the calling, the sole ambition of our youth That burning yearning need to find our place It's basically summarizing what it's like to be 40 already. Classified by years of learning finds one deeming it uncouth Leaving only lines from the false smiles upon one's face Okay, the, the captions are not exactly accurate. <laughs> That's, uh, only deeming it 
uncouth should be the line there, leaving only lines from the forced, not fork. All right, the captions aren't great here. Uh, smiles upon one's face. Forced smiles upon one's face. They just didn't even show up. All right, we're, we're gonna uncaptionize. It's a good idea while it lasted. Uh, not all comedy songs have the lyrics on the screen, which, as a guy who usually doesn't put the lyrics on my own videos, I respect that, because you want to be enunciating enough that people get the lyrics, because that's the point of a comedy song, you know? You, the, the lyrics are where the humor is mostly found. Um, so I, I, I don't always uh, agree with putting up lyrics in the songs because you want the song to hopefully be intelligible enough that it's not necessary, but I do appreciate it when they are there. Not saying that he's unintelligible, but sometimes I miss them in the first listen because sometimes the lyrics are fast. And uh, especially in a lot of the, the hip-hop songs and the nerdcore stuff that we might be reacting to here, uh, the lyrics are definitely welcome. ERB especially, because you want to actually say, what was that burn? I want to see that again. So lyrics are always appreciated, and it's kind of being more prevalent in more modern comedy songs. But when comedy songs were Weird Al on MTV, having the lyrics on the screen kind of detracted from the stuff you're trying to show in the video. And that's, again, another focus thing. My music video that I just released recently, yes, it has the lyrics on it, but we didn't want the lyrics to detract from the overall visuals that we're trying to express in the video, too. Um, this seems to be just a performance shot, so the lyrics aren't really going to detract from that. Um, a, a lot of his videos seem to be a lot of just him, camera on him, performing the song. So we're not going to be going into the technicalities too much of what the visual presentation is, but more about the song itself. Um, not that I do that every time anyway. But I'm bringing it up now. Because reasons. Yeah, Alright. We're making friends. At 40, yes, we're making friends. At 40... I love the jauntiness, uh, coupled with almost mariachi horns. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good mix. It's a good mix of things. We're making at 40, yes, we're making friends. At 40, this is not how I imagine it like to be. It's really quite exhausting, in all honesty. <laughs> it's not what exactly I imagined midlife to be. It's really quite exhausting. <laughs> hey, you're not wrong. Making friends. At 40, when it's nice to make a friend, but with so many compromises, we may well have to pretend. Ain't that the truth? Uh, I, again, getting personal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 42. I, it's hard to make new friends after a certain age point, and most of my friends, I, I moved to the Chicagoland area about five years ago. And uh, most of my friends are still back in Baltimore. I'm still in touch with them, and we're still friends. Don't really hang out as much as we used to, obviously. And I have some friends here in, in the Chicagoland area, but again, don't know them as well, don't have the same closeness with them, and, and hanging out with them, especially in the middle of the Backstreet Boys reunion tour, uh, is, is uh, complicated at best. So, uh, yeah, friendships. They're important, is what I'm trying to say. Connection. How will we fate you now to meet? Or have I met you many other times before? I'm very bad with that. If it weren't for Facebook, I, I'm terrible with names. But hey, I'm friends with you on Facebook, so I can put your face to a name. Unless your profile picture is a drawing or a picture of not you. And then I have trouble. Pretend. What's the connection? How will we fate you now to meet? Or have I met you many other times before? Did you marry an acquaintance? Did you move in down the street? Please forgive me for these days, I'm never sure. <laughs> Are you really curious? 
or just pretending that you care a folly of which you were once vaguely aware <laughs> okay okay i'm digging it this is not really really as uh laugh out loud as uh the you know his more popular song or the other songs previously on here but it's still very clever i'm still digging this song a lot days i'm never sure are you really curious or just pretending that you care a folly of which you were once vaguely aware yeah it's like a, it's like when you meet somebody again and you're like oh how you doing a lot of people don't really care when you say how you doing they're just making conversation and most people who, you know, subscribe to the social contract will say, oh, I'm doing fine, even if they're not doing fine. But if you have a friend that you're close with, obviously that, that connection is there and that you can expound on those usually. But, you know, with mere acquaintances, sometimes, sometimes it's best not to. Just social contract. It's boring you as well, the conversation leaves us short And I can't disguise my yawning when the subject turns to sport <laughs> Alright, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah Getting into a conversation with someone who's an acquaintance Who you're not really that big of a connection with And, oh, we're just making small talk This is, this is not going the way I expected Oh, you're talking about sports now I, I, I have lost all interest now uh, not saying me personally, but subject of the song I hear, obviously. I I fake sports conversations. I don't watch a lot of sports. Gee, go figure. Me, don't watch a lot of sports. Um, but, uh, you know, I can fake the conversation to a certain point. Like, I'm from Baltimore, and a lot of people from Baltimore really love being from Baltimore. It's a thing. And uh, so, of course, the conversation will turn to the Baltimore Ravens, a team which... You know, most people from Baltimore love. I've watched the Baltimore Ravens. I haven't since moving to Chicago, but I've watched them. And I know that things exist within that so that I can kind of fake my way through a conversation. Fake it till you make it, kids. Important safety tip or something. We're making friends. At Just love that trumpet part. We're making friends. At 40 being forced to behave like a proper adult Meeting all types of people one can't help but insult <laughs> Making friends at 40, trying to be a proper adult Meeting all kinds of people you can't help but insult That's a great line. That is a great line. We're making friends at 40 when it's nice to make new friends It is Now that weddings, births and funerals Make for action packed weekends <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because once you, you hit 40 Your, your action packed weekends aren't quite as full as they used to be So weddings, births and funerals are what makes your weekends action-packed, not like binge drinking and parties and concerts and stuff. We still go to those things. But sometimes things get a little too people-y. You know what I'm talking about? It's a little too people-y in here. So it's hard to make friends when places are too full of people that you're just kind of like, eh, I don't want to, I don't want to people today. I know it may sound weird to some of you, but the rest of you actually know what I'm talking about. So, ask your neighbor. I say like you're sitting next to each other watching this collectively. I gotta work on remembering that I'm on video and not in front of a crowd of people. Sure, it's a thing. Here we go. What would we have to say if we could see ourselves then now stood round a barbecue Trying to heat up half a cow in polite conversations making interest to be nice That little, that little bridge there almost turned into uh, the bridge from Heart of Glass by Blondie just the, the, the tempo and the meter and, and almost the rhythm of it, at least in the opening of that bridge, uh, that sort of like, like da 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 da
uh, you know, I'm a music scholar. I, I'm, a, I'm a person who's listened to music. We could see ourselves then now around a barbecue. Right there. Trying to heat up half a cow in polite conversations, feigning interest to be nice, discussing the remortgage to get some free financial advice. <laughs> Ooh, hold that nose. Bravo. Bravo. Not only heating up an entire half a cow, great line, but talking about re-upping your mortgage just to get some free financial advice. Some word of mouth goes a long way in trying to figure those things out, especially for people who are uneducated about housing um, and how to buy houses and things, especially millennials uh, at this point because honestly most a good number of millennials are entering their 40s uh i'm 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 a, more of a zennial i was in born in 79 so it's like that that middle area that uh, anyway you know what i'm saying i'm i'm babbling at this point it's fine just great yes we're making friends we can't handle our booze like we did once before Which makes inane interactions even more of a chore <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay, booze is the great uh, unifier You know, it, it, nothing, if you're having trouble talking at a party Some people use alcohol as, as liquid courage To be able to have conversations and make themselves appear more sociable um, and, uh, and when you get older, sometimes it's a little harder to keep up the same kind of drinking that you used to do in your youth. And when you realize that you've taken those drinks away, it's harder to keep up inane conversation. Absolutely 100% true. Uh, for most people, I always kind of been a teetotaler. I, I'm never one to really, use, uh, have partaken alcohol at any point. I've had maybe six drinks my entire life, if that. Um, my wife, however, uh, is part of a... Well, they should be called a science fiction club with a drinking problem, but they're a drinking club with a science fiction problem. Um, it's called Barfleet. Uh, it's popular here in the Midwest. There are several different ships that do it. And uh, I was introduced to that. Uh, and I don't drink at all, even though I, I go to Barfleet functions. And uh, my wife uh, doesn't drink nearly as much as she did when I first uh, moved here and met here. Uh, so, uh, you know, getting older. Getting old is getting old. That's all I'm saying. Making friends at 40, though it's nice to make a friend. The need to get home for dogs and babysitters brings the night to a swift end. Another another very true, very clever line. You gotta get home because uh, you got dogs at home or you, you, you got the babysitters waiting for you because uh, people who are older, they have responsibilities and you can't be out all all night because uh, that would shirk your responsibility unless, unless you're not a great person or you don't have those responsibilities. My wife and I, we're, we're not having kids. It's, it's not happening. Uh, we don't want kids. It's not that we have anything against kids. It's just something we didn't want, and uh, you know, it's not. We're not. It's not happening. Uh, so we don't have that problem. But we do have cats. We have two cats. We want to get home to, because if we don't feed them, they'll eat our faces. Cats. Cats will love you. I, I've learned they're not all complete assholes. Cats will love you, but if you die, they will eat your face. Because they need their nourishment somewhere. Bravo. Oh, he's got a, a new album titled Making Friends at 40. And again, the trope of the comedian solo playing all of his own friends. Uh, here in photo form is the album cover. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Oh, Friday... The 10th of December is when this album comes out. That's a week after my new album comes out, Illinois, coming out to uh, Bandcamp and other things probably around that time on December 3rd. December 3rd, of course, being Bandcamp Friday. 
so yes, uh, go check out Thomas Benjamin Wilde's new album, his previous works as well. Uh, links to all of these videos without me yammering them over them are in the description below. Uh, this was great. These were some good kind of eye-opening songs about myself to this week. That was unexpected. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, please, as always, like, share, comment, subscribe. Consider supporting me on Patreon where you can get these early. And, of course, checking out my own music as well would really help me out. Trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so if you're not subscribed, click the button that says subscribe. Maybe the bell, too. That'll, that'll help. Anyway, this was fun. We'll do it again next week. All right, bye. I don't, I don't, that was not even a wave that time. I was just putting my hand up. All right. Our department has a meeting today. But Corey can't even. And he won't listen to what our boss will say. Because Corey can't even. There's no more ink in the fax machines. And Corey can't even. And he won't ever tell me what it means.